Along with millions of others this winter, I've been hunkering down and watching the saucy period drama Bridgerton. Bridgerton focuses on the heteronormative stories of high society at the end of the Georgian period, and it got me thinking, what about the queer stories of the working classes in Georgian London? The Georgian period began in the early 1700s. A recent shift in moral attitudes, led in part by a religious organisation called the Society for the Reformation of Manners, meant it was becoming more and more dangerous to be a gay man. Sodomy or buggery, that's sex between men, was considered more serious than almost all other crimes, and if convicted, you face the death penalty. The Society for the Reformation of Manners made it their duty to root out all profane, immoral practices, especially among the lower classes, and at the top of their hit list were mollies. Molly was a word for an effeminate man, and a derogatory term for a man who had sex with men. These men, who would identify now as gay, bisexual, transgender or queer, would meet in places known as molly houses. These are the ancestors of the modern day gay bar, but they could be in a tavern, a coffee house, a shop or even a private house. And at molly houses these men would gather to drink, smoke, gossip, laugh and flirt. Many would also dress in women's clothes and they'd imitate whores or prostitutes similar to some drag queens these days. There was one molly house on Tottenham Court Road which, interestingly enough for the 1720s, was owned and run by a freed black man called Julius Caesar Taylor. At this one, each new member had a glass of gin thrown in their face and were given a molly name, a bit like a christening. Some of my favourite molly names are Princess Serafina, Susan Guzzle and Miss Muff. Miss Muff ran her own molly house in Whitechapel. Molly houses often conducted mock marriages between the men. These were usually then consummated, sometimes in a group fashion, and it was not unknown for them to stage mock births using wooden dolls. Law enforcement would infiltrate these close-knit networks by posing as gay men themselves. They'd gather intelligence, leave, then come back and make arrests another day. The Society for the Reformation of Manners brought in their biggest haul when they raided Mother Clapp's Molly House near Hoban in 1726. Over 30 arrests were made and three men were hanged. Persecution continued in this way throughout the whole of the 18th century. Nearly 100 years later in 1810, there was a famous raid of a molly pub called the White Swan in Veer Street. Two men were sent to the gallows for buggery, the rest were humiliated in the pillory. Seething crowds would surround the men and hurl insults, rotten food, mud, animal dung, even dead cats and dead dogs. Some would take it upon themselves to throw stones or bricks, and as I'm sure you can work out, this punishment was not just a slap on the wrist. Many LGBTQ men lost their lives in this way. It's important to note here that there has never been a law in this country against sex between women. Um, of course, it went on, and some queer women who dressed as men were prosecuted for fraud or put in the pillory or flogged. But due to the subjugation of women in society, it wasn't until the 1940s when women started to work away from home during the Second World War that we see a similar lesbian subculture emerge in London. <laughs>